Are you ready for the word? Amen, amen, amen. Will you please open your Bibles and join me in 2 Samuel chapter 9, starting at verse 1. If you'll join me in that, you know, we have started this and we're in this uh, uh, place of divine encouragement. And uh, we've come out of divine assignment. You know, we've talked through it and there were several, several um, uh, iterations of of messages for you to receive concerning divine assignment. I hope that you've listened to those. If you have not listened, go back, please, ma'am, please, sir, go back and open up your ear gate wide, open up your heart to receive the word and get that information. Many of us want to know what's our assignment, what are we supposed to be doing, and God is trying to tell you and show you uh, through the life of the individuals in the Bible, and so I want to make sure that you hear that, that you go back and you receive that and you collect that. Amen? Amen. 2 Samuel chapter 9, I'm going to read verses 1 through 11. I'm reading from the NIV version, and so uh, I want you to get this, and I want you to understand this uh, as the Lord is, is uh, helping us to understand divine encouragement. The word of the Lord reads this way. David asks, is there anyone still left in the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now, therefore, a servant of Saul's household named Ziba uh, then summoned him to appear before David, and the king said to him, Are you Ziba? At your service, he replied. The king asked, is there, is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, There is a son, still a son of Jonathan, who is lame in both feet. Where is he, the king asked, and Ziba answered, he is in the house of Makar, son of Amiel, uh, in Lodabar. So King David had, uh, ding, so King David had um, uh, him brought from Lodabar, uh, from the house of Bacar, son of Amiel, when uh, Mesibaphath, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. And David said to him, Mephibosheth, at your service, he replied, he says, don't be afraid. David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. But Shephaphath bowed down and said, uh, 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 what is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? Then the king summoned Ziba, uh, uh, Saul's steward, and said to him, Listen, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons, your servants, are to farm the land for him and bring in crops so that your master's grandson may be provided for. And, and, and Meshibaphath, uh, grandson of your master, will always eat at my table. Now, Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then Ziba said to the king, your servant will do whatever my lord the king commands his servants to do. So when Zibaphath ate at David's table like one of the king's sons. Thus far, the reading of God's word. I want to talk to you for a few minutes along this wise, again, under the heading, Divine Assignment. The subtitle is this. Things are getting ready to turn in your favor. Things are getting ready to turn in your favor. You know what's so interesting to me? Because we can go through life and things can happen to us and we'll feel like that we are uh, 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 not even, uh, uh, God's not even mindful of us. God doesn't know where we are. He, he doesn't talk to us. We pray. He doesn't answer. Uh, maybe I'm the only one that's ever prayed to God and God just, uh, he remains silent. He doesn't say a word. You know, I cry out. I'm in a situation, a circumstance, and I want God to come and rescue me and turn things around and do things. And God doesn't say a word. And it's it's interesting because we oftentimes find ourselves in those places, and here we have Meshibaphat, and he has come to a place, he has come to a place now where he is being identified, because David wants to bless somebody that was connected to not just Saul, but more importantly to Jonathan. I want to say that to you, I want you to understand that because David and Jonathan had an extremely close relationship. They were friends. They were more than friends. They were covenant brothers. They, uh, 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 Jonathan Law loved Saul to the degree that even though Jonathan know, knew and understood that as, as David advanced, as David kept going forward, then that meant quite possibly, and it was almost a certainty, that, that, that Jonathan would not sit on the throne after his father Saul. 
admit then that he was willing to give up and step out of the way of David, who was now called of God. I wonder how many of us would be willing to step out of the way to put aside our own agendas, to lay down our dreams so that the will and purpose and plan of God can go forward. I wonder how many of us would do that. I wonder how many of us would simply say, let me get out of the way, God, because what your will is and what your plan is is more important than what I want. It's interesting because they come to a place and, uh, uh, and, 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 and now it seems, it, it seems kind of tragic. And I want to say this to you because oftentimes the way you start is not how you're going to finish. I want you to get that down in your spirit. I want you to really understand that. I want you to, because it starts off uh, for, for, for um, Mephibosheth, it starts off this way. Wherein, as he was five years old, his grandfather, Saul, and his father, Jonathan, were both killed in the same day. And, and in that moment, at five years old, he, he loses his place. At five years old, he loses his place. The one day, one day he's heir to the throne. And the next, he is alone and discarded. I, I want to say that to you because, because how does one, uh, uh, from one day to the next, from how, how, how do you lose your place? How does one stop before they get started? How, how does he lose when he's not even old enough yet to understand? How is it possible that he loses the place that's been designated for him before he even knows what that place is? Hmm. Uh, maybe you can't get with with Shiva Fat. Maybe you can't understand his slot, his place, and what he's going through. Uh, uh, but maybe, uh, uh, maybe because you never lost your place. But for those of us who've lost our places, for those of us uh, that's had the rug snatched out from under them, for those of us who are on top one minute, Elder Marie, and the next minute we were down, for those of us that went to work one day and the next day we came to work and they said the building, the business has shut down. For those of us that have lost our places, we had loved ones and people that we've loved and people that we were connected to and people that we walked with hand in hand as, 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 as uh, our spouses and, and they were together. We were together one day and the next day they were gone. We've lost our place. And I want you to understand something. When you lose your place, your world is turned upside down because too many of us associate our self-worth in what we do and who we're connected to. Too many of us, if things happen and, and we're up one day and we're down the next and, and, and because we're, we're connected to stuff and because we're after stuff and because we're pursuing stuff and because we have gravitated to some level of what the world deems as success and, and we have people and places and we have stuff and we, we, we're enjoying life. But one day to the next, you can lose your place. And that's one thing, it's one thing, and I just, I want to set the story, I want to put, I want to just paint the picture for you, because it's one thing for you to lose your place, but that's not all that happened to Mephibosheth. That's not all hap that happened to him, because the Bible tells us in, in that same uh, 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 book, in, in fact, it is in, it's, it's the first, the uh, fourth chapter of the, in the fourth verse of 2 Samuel, and this is what it says, and it says, Saul's son Jonathan had a son named Mephibosheth, who was crippled as a child. He was five years old when the report came from Jezreel that Saul and Jonathan had been killed in battle. Listen to this. When the child's nurse heard the news, she picked him up and fled. But as she hurried away, she dropped him and he became Crippled. It's interesting because, because not only has he lost his place, but now he's been dropped. Not only, it, it would have been enough that you have lost, things are turned upside down. Your place is no longer where it was and what it was. And, and you've lost your place and you're, you're trying to recalibrate yourself. and You're trying to find again your, your place, where you belong, where you stand. You're trying to navigate. Where it is you belong because you've lost your place. But that wasn't enough. He had also been dropped. Now it's interesting because, because it, it, it's not the dropping 
that's the issue. <laughs> I, I'm talking to people who've been dropped. I'm talking to people who's lost their place. I, I, but, but in this moment, in this text, in this scripture, in, in uh, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse 4, I, I want to talk to those expressly who have been dropped. It's not the dropping that's the issue. I've come to understand, Elder Marie, that the dropping is not the issue. The issue is correct healing. See, because he was dropped and the bones were broken, but had the bones been set correctly and time had been given for him to heal, then he would not have been lame. And some of us have been dropped, but we didn't take time to heal. Some of us have stepped out and walked out of marriages and six months later, as soon as your divorce is final, you step into another marriage and then you wonder why you're back again at divorce court. It's because though you were dropped, you did not heal correctly. I'm trying to get you to understand. It's a healing is a process. Healing requires time. Healing requires commitment to that process. Healing, hear me now, healing requires, and here's the issue, Pastor Tazo, here's why many of us can't uh, embrace and, and, and actually walk in the fullness of healing is because healing requires following instructions. The doctor gives you the instruction. He gives you per the prescription. He says, take this. Uh, take these, this medicine until it's gone. Take two pills twice a day until it's gone. And you get down to about the fourth or fifth one. You try it for a couple of days. Then you stop taking it. And you, wonder, you don't understand how, why, how come I, and, you, and you go back to the same doctor and you say, you know, I still don't feel good. I still, you know, there's still something going on. And the doctor asks you, did you follow the instructions and did you finish the medication? Well, go back and do what I said do initially. And then let's determine whether that works for you or not. But let's first try that. I'm saying that because many of you that need to be healed in your emotions, need to be healed uh, in your spirit, and your soul. Many of you don't follow the instruction of the word. Many of us just jump right back into relationship. Right back into situation. Somebody will do something and God will tell you about this Holy Spirit. That's not the one to be connected to. And because you have this thing about being light. That oftentimes, hear me, overrides what God says. You gotta, you wanna, you, you just don't understand why so and so don't like you. I, I gotta try harder. I gotta do something different. And, and you know, I'm gonna press my way a little further. And, 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 but the truth of the matter is, the Lord says, that's not the person I connected you to. That's not the person that has what you need to get where I have purpose for you to go. What our challenge oftentimes is that we're dropped. And when we're dropped, we don't heal. Correctly, I, 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 I want to I talk to you for a few minutes about what, what it means and what the problem is and, and, and what happens. Because, because it's interesting about the meaning of Meshivaphat's uh, name. It's interesting what it means. It means that he is a, as it says, a dispeller of shame. He is, he is the one who drives out shame. He is, his name means to drive out shame. To listen, to blow away, to scatter into corners, shame. <laughs> the feeling and condition as well as the cause. Can I, can I say to you that there are four mountains that you're going to have to overcome if you're going to overcome shame. I, 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 I want to just share these, uh, not, not four, there's three. I want to share these three mountains that you're going to have to overcome. Uh, uh, you're going to have to stop being the victim. You're going to have to start fighting. You're going to have to start fighting. I'm not talking about a physical fight. I'm talking about a fight internally with yourself, with your mind. You're going to have to get your mind right. You're going to have to get your mind together because as a man thinking, so is he. You're going to have to understand that though some things happen to you, they don't define who you are. Here's the first one. There's, there's again, three mountains that, that you're going to have to climb over. The first, smile, the first mountain is feeling, the feeling of shame. 
It's interesting because uh, the, uh, uh, the feeling is a sense. It's one of the, the five senses, uh, sight, hearing, taste, smell, and touch, feeling, feeling what we feel. Uh, uh, but I want you to understand that this, in, in this case, it's an internal awareness. Because see, what happens to many of us, we have this shame, but you couldn't tell it from the outside, but in the inside is where the struggle takes place. Because something happened to you, and, 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 and you know, and as the years go by and the things uh, progress and you move on in life and time and those type of things, but yet there's an internal struggle with what has happened to you. You still haven't let it go. You're still that little girl uh, uh, who was touched the wrong way. You're still that little boy who wasn't handled correctly. And, and, and the challenge is that we have this internal struggle. We have this internal fight going on it be, because on the inside, there's this internal awareness as to what happened. Here it is. It's the thing that remains on the inside long after the action outside has taken place. Feeling, how you feel. You ask people that all the time. We say, well, how, how, how you feeling? And, and we say, we all say, well, I'm good. No, you're not. But that's what we say because we're still fighting the internal feeling of what has taken place. That internal shame, that moment. In history, that moment in time where something happened to us and now we are ashamed of it. And, and, and as, as opposed to dealing with it and understanding that, oh, that, that oftentimes it wasn't even a decision that you made. It was someone or something that, 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 uh, that, that, imp- that did something to you that impacted your life that you had absolutely no participation in. It simply happened to you. That is your only participation. It happened to you. You were a child. It happened to you. They told you to come, come, uh, 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 come into the basement and you went because you trusted them. It happened to you. You, you, you said, you said, uh, uh, you know, let me, let me, let, you know, uh, uh, let me, let me call my mom. Let me call my. They said, no, your, your mom told me to come get you, and you trusted them. It happened to you. But you're left to deal with the shame and the feeling of shame that you carry internally. If you're going to get over this mountain, you're going to have to deal with how you feel inside and stop telling everybody and trying to be fine and okay when really you're not. Feeling. It's the feeling. The feeling is the first mountain. The second mountain is the condition. (laughs) Because the condition is the reminder of what happened. (laughs) Uh, It it doesn't just remind you, it reminds everyone that you see. When when something happens to you. So here we have Mephibosheth, and and every time they see him, they see the fact. And in fact, uh, uh, when David asks uh, 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 Ziba, if there is anyone from the, from the, uh, 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 that he can show kindness to from from Saul or from Jonathan, uh, he, he says, he says, yeah, he has a son, who is lame in both feet. He doesn't even call the son's name before he calls the son's condition. He doesn't even identify. He could have just said, but she was fast. But he says, yeah, Jonathan has a son, but he's lame in both feet. It's interesting because because the the dynamic of this is that oftentimes that, that even if you had a condition that you couldn't even present yourself before the king. You couldn't even go in the king's presence if you had an issue, if you had a condition. And so, and so, uh, Aziba has some responsibility to tell David, the king, of the issue. But at least tell his name. At least tell his name first before, because he is not his condition. I want to say that to many of you all. You are not your condition. You are not what happened to you. You are not the result and the condition of what's, what, what happened to you. And many of, many, uh, and I, I can't even begin to, uh, to put in format a number, but many people deal with their condition and they go through life. People looking at them, pointing at them, whispering, saying cruel stuff, don't even know who they are, don't even take the time to get to know them. Because there's so much more than their condition. There's so much more than what has happened to them. There's so much more to them than what they've experienced. But you'll never get to know because you can't get past their condition. 
And what happens to many of us is that if you can't get past my condition, it, it, it almost stifles me such that I can't get past my condition. If every time I run into somebody and their stare, their look, their conversation reminds me of my condition, how do you think I feel? How do you think, that I, how do you think I internalize that? How do you think I deal with that? I see you whispering. I see you, 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 you're staring. I see you you're talking and you're covering your mouth and you're looking in my direction and you're pointing at me as if I, I, I'm something you've never seen before. You have to get past the condition. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of, of the conversation that Paul was having with the Lord. He says, I've got this thorn in my flesh, this messenger of Satan, the buffet to me. And he said, I've asked you three times, will you remove it? And he said, no. The Lord said, I can't. He says, there's a reason why I, I, you have this thorn. It's because of the revelation that, that's given to you. That I've got to keep you in a place where you're always coming to me. Least you think more of yourself than you ought. Some of us have conditions because, because it's going to help us stay in God's presence. Some of us have issues because it's going to help us cry out to the Father and go to the Father. Some of us have conditions. Listen to me. I want you to get this in your spirit. Some of us have conditions because God can trust us to still walk in purpose and destiny even with our condition. And we're showing others how you live in spite of your condition. Come on. Come on. Feeling. Condition. I'm talking about shame. Uh, this last one, this last one throws me for a loop a little bit. This last one is the cause. So you have the feeling, you have the condition, and you have the cause. The cause is uh, 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 oftentimes it, it's, it's dealt with and it's, it's spoken about in this way. Why did this happen to me? <laughs> I didn't deserve this. God, why did you let this happen to me? And many of us don't even understand that what has happened, the intent is to frame and shape you for the plan and purpose of God. That there's something about what's taken. And the Bible says this, all things work together. But, but, but when you're going through it, it doesn't seem like it's working together. It seems like it's working against you. When you're, when, you're, when you're the one with the condition, when you're the one with the feelings, when, you, when you're the one with the cause, the question, why did this happen to me? You're the person trying to get over it. You're the person trying to get through it. You're the person trying to live with it. And all the time, the Lord is molding and shaping you into what he's purposed you to be. And the condition... The feeling and the cause collectively and together all are doing its job to help formulate and shape you. And, and, and the wonderful thing about it is if you keep on pressing, if you just keep on uh, uh, moving toward God, if you keep doing what it is that the Father has asked you to do, you'll find out why you had to do and go through, why you had to struggle. Why you had to feel the way you felt. And, 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 and God will help you understand as he's molding and shaping you for his perfect will. Why is it necessary? I got I to hurry up. I didn't even got to my first point yet. I got to hurry up. You're going to have to overcome those mountains. His name, his name means a dispeller of shame. And yet he carries shame with him everywhere he goes. Every time somebody has to pick him up. He's shame. Every time somebody's got to carry him from one place to another, he's a shame. Every time somebody's got to bathe him and, and take him to the restroom, he's a shame. Every time something happens that magnifies his condition, he is a shame. And yet his name means a dispeller of shame. One who comes and blow, simply blows away shame, blows it away, scatters into a corner shame. And yet he's the one who, who better, who better 
to be a dispeller of shame than someone that has a condition that would cause shame if they didn't handle it the right way. Who better to be a dispeller of shame than someone who has to fight it every day, who has to battle with shame every single day. Everywhere they go, and, and, and the challenge is, the challenge is that, 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 that the condition is always such that you never get a break from it. That you can't lay it down and then pick it up when you leave. That every day, every second and every minute and every hour of every day, you're, you're de- you have to deal with the condition that causes shame in your life. And I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking through this because, because now David, David gets to this place and he, he calls his son in and, and uh, he, 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 I mean, he calls, he calls for uh, Meshubapheth and he says, you know, go, go get him. And they, they, they go get him and he's in Lodabar. We, we, we'll get to Lodabar in a minute, but, but he comes, he comes and, 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 and when he gets there and, and they, he, he, you know, he, he bows, he says, Meshippaphat? And David, and, and uh, David says that, he calls out his name and he, he says, he says, yeah, it's me. And then he tells him, as I read the text, all that he's going to do for him. And listen to this. And, and, and then, and then he, here's, here's the point that's kind of confusing for me because, because Meshippaphat says, why would you even consider a dead dog like me? Why would you even be concerned about a dead dog like me? It's interesting uh, because, because here, here's how God deals with it. Because God then places it upon the heart of David. Now you got to understand David. David is strategic. And David understands that now he is just coming to the kingship. David understands though that that, uh, that if there are any heirs of Saul or Jonathan, that they could legally come and challenge the kingship because they are an heir, while David is not. They are heirs. So David is strategic. David is like, so, so we think David's just being kind. He is being kind, but David wants to know who I'm going to have to contend with for this kingship. So he says, is there any left? Of Saul's house or from Jonathan and whom I can show kindness to. The truth of the matter is David wants to know who else is out there. He wants to know who, who, who uh, am I going to have to contend with. So, so, so he, he, he goes and gets him. I, I, I want to raise this as a point. I want to raise this as a point because the king asks, is there still, is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king and said, there is still a son of Jonathan. He is lame in both feet. And uh, the king says, where is he? Ziba answered and said, he is at the house of uh, uh, Makar, the son of Amiel uh, in Lodabar. Listen to this. Can I say this? And I want you to get this at the point. No matter what's going on with you, no matter how you see or view yourself, no matter how much you think that you have been forgotten and you've been cast away and, and you have been discarded, no matter what it looks like, no matter how many days go by, no matter, no matter how many minutes and seconds, no matter how many weeks and months and years go by, it does not matter. God has not lost track of you. God knows exactly where you are. And at the appointed time, he's going to bring you forth. You weren't discarded. You were simply hidden. You weren't discarded. You were simply tucked away for the the God time in your life. I want you to get that. I want you to understand how God is moving here because because, uh, oftentimes we can get, because, because for us, for you and I, time is of great importance because we're bound by it. Because we don't have infinite time, because we are subject to it, there's a day, a time appointed to every man to die. We understand that we're not going to live forever in this body and in this earth. 
So, so time is a great concern for us, but time is not a great concern for God. He has set things in order according to his will, his plan and his purpose. And so, and so, and so then we, so we have this struggle. We have, we have, we have, uh, 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 this 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 thing where where because we uh, nobody notices us and nobody uh, calls us and nobody asks us to do things and and, and, and you know we have this thing and I, I see it prevalent in Atlanta. We have this thing where there seems and appears to be more women willing and ready to be married than there are men who want to be married. And, 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 and because there is a time associated, because, because, see, many of us have these plans and we have these, these ideologies and these dreams and these, you know, we got these timelines. And, and in this timeline, I want to be married by the time I'm this age. And I want to, I want to be, have some children by the time I'm this age. And as you get closer to that age, listen to this, what I've determined and what I've seen is that people get closer to the time that they've allotted, not God, but they've allotted, they get more desperate. Not only do they get desperate, but they, they get to the place where now they're willing to, to, to reduce and let down the standard that they have determined that they want in a spouse. And it's gotten so bad, it's gotten so bad that I've seen, I've seen individuals actually willing to share men. Because it's gotten so bad. And some, woman, some women will say, it's better to have a piece of man than no man at all. <laughs> the crowd is saying, no sharing, ain't no sharing, ain't no sharing, ain't no sharing. So it's, it's interesting to me because, because uh, the time and, and where we are and what, what our purpose is and not God's purpose. And what we have established and what we have set in place and not what God has set in place drives us oftentimes to make decisions that we ought not make. That oftentimes becomes detrimental to us. So, he's, so God knows exactly where you are. You think you're forgotten, but you're not. And now, now it's your turn. <laughs> If you're standing next to somebody in your home, if you're sitting watching the broadcast with somebody, if you're here in the building, just turn to somebody and tell them, it's my turn, it's my turn, it's my turn, it's my turn, it's my turn. Say it like you mean it. Say it like you've been selected. Say it like you've been called to come in front of the king. Say it like he's summoned for you. Say it like he, he, he has gone and he sent somebody to get you. Say it like your ride has shown up and now you're on your way to where you have been called. Oh, uh, Jeff goes and he gets, <laughs> he gets him. And it's interesting because uh, 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 King David said, uh, uh, go get him from Lodabar. Go get him from a place that is interesting title and name. So we give, we give, under, we understand that, that oftentimes, uh, unlike some of us, uh, who name my children after cars and after liquor and that kind of stuff. That, uh, unlike many of us, you know, the child's name means something. And, it, and oftentimes it's, it's a, it, it represents the character of the child. You know, Joseph, uh, uh, not Joseph, but uh, uh, Jacob was called Jacob because Jacob was a trickster. If you understand the name Jacob, it, is, it means trickster, a deceiver, a liar. And that's what J Jacob was until his name became Israel. Because it defines the character of the child. And so, and so, so it's interesting because, because Lodabar, here, hear this, Lodabar is a compound word. Uh, uh, when defined in the Hebrew, lo is a common particle of negation, meaning no. So when you see lo, just take the L off and put the N, it means no, N-O. So it's a compound word, so there's no, and then the bar, as in Lodabar, in the Hebrew means pasture. It's a feeding place, a place of nourishment, a place of rest. So when we see the word Lodabar, it means no pasture. Uh, uh, to be pastureless, it means no promise, no provision, no purpose. It, it's interesting because, because oftentimes where we find ourselves in a Lodabar place is there is a crossroad. 
is a point of decision. It is a place in a day set before you where you have to make a decision. The Lord says, I set before you life and death. This day, life and death. He says, choose life. It is, it is Lodabar's oftentimes, and, and we think that it's a location that we travel to. No, Lodabar is a place where you find yourself that you're going to have to make up your mind about some stuff. That you're going to have to make some decisions about what it is that you're going to do. That you're going to have to make up your decision, make a decision whether you're going to follow God or whether you're going to do your own thing. You're going to have to make a decision of whether you're going to trust God in everything or you're going to trust uh, the work of your own hands. You're going to have, Lodabar is a place where you're going to have to make up your mind and make some decisions. It's a place of decision. It is a place of isolation because God knows how to get you by yourself. So you have to deal with yourself. He gives you opportunity to come clean. And he gives you opportunity to talk to him. But, but oftentimes we allow life and we, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with life in such a way that it creates and causes opportunities for us to not deal with us. We, we're running around with friends and we're going from here to there we, and we're, we're, we're active in all these different uh, 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 things and we, we got our hands in all these different pots and all these different things in life. And the Lord says, it's okay because I know how to get you. I know how to sit you down and I know how to isolate you so that you have to deal with you. Some of you all, it, it's, not, it's not that you have done anything wrong per se, it is more so that God has set you down so you can deal with the issues that need to be dealt with. We've ran. We've hid. We've heard the voice of the Lord. We've heard the Holy Ghost. We, we, we felt his call and his drawing is poor, and yet still we ignore it. And the Lord says, okay, <laughs> I, I know how to get you. I know how to get you. If I got to, if I got to create a giant fish that's going to swallow you up on the shore and keep you isolated for three days, I know how to get you. If I got to put you not in the jail, but in the inner jail, in the inner prison. And, and so I can talk to you. I know how to get you where I need you so that I can talk to you and you can deal with what you need to deal with because you're not going to be able to get to where you should be until you're willing to deal with what you have to deal with. So he, so, so he says he, he's in Lodabar, he, a place of decision, a place of isolation. Listen to this, a place of rejection. Lodabar doesn't want you. Lodabar cannot sustain you. Lodabar was never intended. Again, it means no pasture. It mean, it's not a feeding place. It can't sustain you. It can't keep you. In fact, if you stay in Lodabar too long, you're going to die. Lodabar is intended to ruffle you, to shake you, to wake you up. Lodabar is intended to bring you to a place where you say, I yield, I yield. What must I do? Some of us are in Lodabar right now. For some of us, the pandemic brought Lodabar to your homes. For some of us, the, 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 the pandemic brought Lodabar to your jobs. For some of us, the, listen to this. For some of you all, the, the, the pandemic brought Lodabar to your marriage. Because there was stuff that you refused to deal with. Stuff that you refused to acknowledge. And you kept sh uh, uh, sweeping stuff under the rug. And you kept going like everything was fine. And you kept ignoring the signs and the things that God would say to you and show you. So the Lord says, I'm going to bring Lodabar to you. Or you can deal with what needs to be dealt with. <laughs> I'm going to bring a lot about you, but, but thanks be to God who giveth us the victory. Because uh, uh, I came to tell somebody today, and I got just a few more minutes to tell you, it's not where you start, but it's where you finish. It's not where you start. And you started in some difficult places. He was five years old. When he fell, he was five years old when he lost his place. He was dropped. He was dropped. He was, he was five years old when he had to deal with all he had to deal with. And the people that he loved, the people that meant a great deal to him were gone. So he was left to deal with what he had to deal with by himself. 
I just want to tell you, I just came to tell you that, that, that it's not where you start. It is where you finish. Things are getting ready to turn in your favor. Let me, let, let me, let me get more on this. I just got a few more things I want to share with you. So, 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 so this, this, we get to this place now. <laughs> we get to this place. In verse 7 where David says, and David replied, don't be afraid. For I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I, I, I want to I share with you right there because that thing just pricked me in my spirit because there's going to be some favor and there's going to be some things open to you. There's going to be some doors open and some, some ways made and some people who come in and intervene and, and you don't even going to know those people. And you're going to say, well, why are you doing this to me? And it's going to be because of other relationships in your life. It's going to be because of fathers and mothers and aunties and uncles and people who have prayed and cry out to God who have served him all their lives. And you're going to be the recipients of the favor that was on their life. It's going to transfer to you. I want you to get that. I want you to understand. I want you to hear me, fathers. Hear me, men. There's going to be faith. If you live right, if you honor your wife, if you love your children, if you work hard, if you do what God tells you to do, the favor of God will be your portion. And it will transfer to your children. Well, how do you know? Well, the Bible says if the sins of the father are transferred to the children, certainly the favor of the father can be transferred to. He says, he says to, he says to Meshubah, he says, he says, don't be afraid for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. Listen, I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather Saul. I'm getting ready to give you some stuff that you didn't even know. You, you were five years old when they were taking it from you. You don't even know. You don't even know the volume of what's getting ready to come to you. You can't even count what's getting ready to come to you. You have not even, your bank account can't even hold what God is getting ready to release to you. You don't even know. He says, I'm getting ready to release. I'm not giving you what your daddy had. I'm giving you what your daddy's daddy had. Who was the king. So he says, he says, he says, he says, I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather Saul. Here's the point. Listen to this. The king blesses Meshibapheth beyond his ability to handle the blessing. He's going to bless you so much to the degree that you don't even have room enough to receive it. He blesses, listen, I want you to understand this. He blesses Meshippaphath to the degree uh, 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 in, in, in this manner, but Meshippaphath is lame. He says, I'm going to give you all the land. I'm going to give you all the herds, the sheep, and, and, the, and the oxen, and the, and, and the cattle. I'm going to give you all that belong to your, your grandfather. But wait a minute, don't you see my condition? So he blesses him above and beyond his ability or capacity to handle the blessing. Oh my God. I want you to understand something. And I want you to get ready because God's getting ready to bless you beyond your ability to handle and your capacity to hold all that he's getting ready to pour out to you. I want you to understand that things are turning in your favor. And, and then the, the father knows where your limitations are. Because in verse 9, this is what he says. Then the king summoned Ziba and, and uh, Saul's steward and said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. And he says, you and your sons and your servants. He had 15 sons and 20 servants, the Bible says. 35 fold. He says, you, your sons, and your servants are to farm, farm the land and bring in the crops. Listen, so that your master's grandson will be provided for. Things are getting ready to turn in your favor. And it's not even predicated upon your ability to handle it. Because he's going to give you not just the stuff, but the resources necessary to conduct the business. He's going to give you what's necessary. He's going to connect you with people. He's going to open doors. You're not even going to understand because it's not your favor, but it's your father's favor. It's your mama's favor. It's your grandfather's favor. It's your grandmother's favor. He's going to give it to you because of what they did. 
in the same manner in which Meshavaphat lost everything in a day. In the same manner that he lost his place in a day. In the same manner in which he was dropped and became lame. In the same manner when things just turned upside down. God says, I'm going to turn them right side up. And in the same day, I'm going to give you everything that belonged to your grandfather. And I'm going to give you servants. Men. Listen to this. Men who can manage the blessing. Men that can grow it. Men alongside you who have the commandment from the king. The orders from the king. They aren't your orders. It's the king's orders. And, the, and, and Zeba said, my king, whatever you say we're going to do. It's turning for you. It's turning for you. You don't even know it. But it's turning for you. You can't even fathom it. But it's turning for you. It's turning for you. It is turning for you. I want you to grab hold of that. I want you to tell somebody, it's turning for me. Y'all ain't saying it like you mean it. It's turning for me. That, that, that doesn't excite God. It's turning for me. Okay. That doesn't excite God. Where is your faith? Where is your belief? If God said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. Where is your faith today? It's turning. You asked for it to turn. And now he sends his words to say it's turning. You ought to be excited. I'm talking to all my irredeemers. You ought to be excited because things are turning in your favor. And it's not your favor because you weren't it. It's your favor because it's been transferred. It's turning. Listen to this. It would have been enough. It would have been enough for him to just to receive all that belonged to his grandfather. It would have been enough for him to just give me another job. It would have been enough just for the, him to, to let me find a place to live. It would have been enough uh, that he provided for me and my children. It would have been enough that, that he, he healed my body. It would have been enough. But he goes a step further. He goes a step further and he says, and he says, and he says, he says, and, and he says uh, 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 grandson of your master. He says, he's talking to Zebra, he says, he says, Meshavafath, the grandson of your master will always eat at my table. Will always eat at my table. <laughs> See, some of y'all, some of y'all don't even understand what's happening here. Some of y'all don't even, uh-uh, 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 it's okay. Some of y'all don't understand what's taking place. Some of y'all don't even understand what, he's, what, he's, what David's telling them. Because he says, you're going to eat. At my table. He says, I just set something up for you. And you don't even understand what I'm getting ready to do for you. He says, but you're going to eat at my table. He says, well, well, I don't understand it, but it would have been enough just for you to bless me like you blessed me. He says, no, but I want you to come to the table. See, because when you sit at the table and, and you draw close up to it and everything, can't nobody see what's happened to you. Can't nobody see your lameness when you're sitting at the table. Can't nobody see your lameness. He says, I'm going to make a place for you where we erase the lameness of your body. We're going to erase your condition. We're going to erase your shame. We're going to erase what you went through. And we're going to cause you to come and sit at the table. And when you sit at the table, you're going to be equal to every other son that sits down at the table. This table makes you equal with all the other sons that God has gathered together. It's not about your ability or even your disability. God says at the table it is common union. And he says I am erasing your lameness at the table. Sit at the table and, and scoot up under the table. Scoot up and as the table's laid out where, where's your lameness at? Can't nobody see it. Where's your lame is that? So we can have a conversation and I ain't got to worry about you staring at my condition. We can have a conversation and I, I'm not, uh, I, I, I don't have internal trauma going on and, and trouble, and, and internal conflict going on because I don't feel some kind of way because everything is even now and every week this is common union. We're, we're, we're at the table of communion where it's common union and everything is equal at the table. And he says, come to the table. You're going to eat at my table. I'm going to make it 
such that everything, when you, when you were at a disadvantage, you didn't grow up on the right side of the track. You didn't grow up with a spoon in your mouth. You struggled all your life. You had to fight for everything you got. But the Lord says, when you come to my table, I'm going to make all things equal. And when you've struggled, you won't struggle anymore. When you felt inferior, the Lord says, I'm taking that inferior, inferiority complex away from you. When you've struggled and felt like you didn't belong, the Lord says, this table is for all my sons. And you, my child, are a son. He says, I'm bringing you to the table. And at the table, everything is equal. God is bringing you to the table. He, he says, he says, to me, super fast, it would have been enough to bless me. It would have been enough that you made it such that. That all the, the people, uh, that, you, that you, you, you called them, you said, go and farm the land. And, and that he has provision. And, and then, and then so, you, so then you have to consider and you have to understand that, that now I have opportunity to bless my children's children because of what God has done for me. And, 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 and the worry and the shame and the, and the challenge and, 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 and how am I going to do this and how am I going to live and who's going to take care of me and, and how am I going to make it. And the Lord says in one swoop. He takes care of all that. My God. Lord. He erases all that. And then he says, besides what I'm going to do for you that's going to last for generations, he says, come sit at my table. Because at my table, where there has been a disadvantage and where you have felt shame, he says, I'm getting ready to really make you a dispeller of shame. I'm getting ready to make you. He says, he says, listen, I just encourage you. Everybody don't understand my voice. Just blow. You just blown shame away. Just blow again. It's backed into a corner. You are a dispeller of shame, not because you've been so good, but because of your father's, your father's, Loyalty, because of your father willing to step out of the way so that the king can come through. The king, the, the plan and purpose of God can be made manifest. Your father's actions, your father's heart, your father's character, your father's integrity has caused you now to experience the favor of God. I believe that God's speaking to all of us today. I believe that all of us in some way, form, or fashion, we all have some Mashiba Feth in us. We all have some experience. We all have some dealings with things that we're ashamed of, things that have happened to us. Things, you, you, do you understand as, as a kid having a speech impediment and not even knowing what to call it and identifying it? And then, God, you call, you, you call me to preach? I want you to understand something, the struggle. I want you to understand the struggle it was today to try to pronounce Meshavah. I want you to understand the struggle every time I stand here in front of every one of you all to formulate the words that don't want to form, to be able to say them in my mind, but not be able to transfer what, I, what, what my mind hears out uh, vocally out of my mouth audibly I want you to understand the struggle and the shame but I want you to understand that I'm at the table I want you to understand that God has made a way for me I want you to understand that he's blessed me beyond measure and I ain't bragging, I'm just leading. I want you to understand, if I could tell you all that God's done for me, you wouldn't be able to handle it. If I could tell you all, and I won't, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you, because I don't want the spirit of jealousy to jump on you. But I believe that God, is, is, even as Bishop Jakes would say, can you stand to be blessed? Because everybody ain't going to be happy about your blessing. But today I stand... As a, as a son of God, I stand knowing that God has taken me through a season and a time and a test. And I got to the place of Lodabar and I chose him. I chose him at the place of crossroads. I chose him. And today, I am blessed beyond measure. Today, all my children go eat well. And I'm talking about children that ain't even born yet. 
today, all my children, everybody attached to me and associated with me from generations down, far as I can see, they're going to be blessed and they're going to eat well in the favor that's on my life. It's going to be trickled down to my children and doors are going to be open to my children and my son's going to eat and they're going to be business owners and they're going to be men and women of influence and they're going to do what God has called them to do and they're going to perform the will of the Lord and they're going to speak a thing and God's going to perform it and they're set their hands to do the will and, and, the, and the purpose and plan of God and God is going to bless that work of their hands. God's going to do it. Why? Because of the favor that sets on me. Fever Chef didn't do anything but woke up one morning and was summoned by the king. <laughs> you don't even know it, <laughs> but you've just been summoned. <laughs> You don't even know it, but somebody just, the king has called you. He's called your name and he sent his servants to come get you. You don't even know it. This time next week, it's going to be a whirlwind of things happening in your life. You're not even going to understand what's taking place, but understand this. It's going to hit you right in the midst of this whirlwind of all these things taking place. It's going to hit you that the Lord, the king of kings has called for you. And when he calls for you, things start happening. When he calls for you, things start turning. When he calls for you, things get in place. Because he has authority to bring one up and set another down. And David says that everything that your grandfather owned is being transferred to you. And you will eat continuously at my table. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for our time together today. We thank you, Lord, as we receive divine encouragement, God, that we understand that things are indeed turning in our favor, that your hand, God, is on us, that you're mindful of us, that you've not forgotten about us, God, but you just had us hidden and tucked away, Father. We thank you, Lord, that at the point of crossroad, at the point of decision, God, we chose you. We chose not to continue to be angry. We chose to leave, to let uh, 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 what's been done to us go. We, cho we chose to walk in forgiveness and no longer holding, holding against our brother and our sister what they did to us. We chose you. We chose you, God. We chose you. And because we chose you, you released to us blessing and favor. That we don't even have the capacity or ability to manage. But Father, you're sending help. People alongside us. Because what you've given us is generational. Because what you've given us is just not just for now. So you're calling people alongside of us. You're calling business partners. You're calling people who are skilled in business, who are skilled in, in, in finance, who are skilled in, in, in ways and in investments. And you're, they're skilled in, in, because what you've given us is generational. Yes, yes, yes. And it's greater than we are. But it's going to go down, fur down the generational line. In my children's 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 children. I go eat well. Thank you, Father, for a seat at your table. Thank you, Lord, that you called me. Thank you, Lord, that you called me for your purpose and for your plan. Even when I didn't think I was qualified, even when I didn't think I could do it, God, you still called me. Thank you, Lord, for a seat at your table. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.